Hey guys, so it's the next day. Of course, last night I couldn't find anything uh, still for parts that's cheap. So I figure I will take the uh, long-term hunt and hopefully something will come up that's uh, uh, in a decent price range. Again, the worst case scenario, I have to buy a new carrier with everything in it for 1800 bucks. But uh, took the ring gear off. I mean, haven't noticed since it's in my hand. And reassembled the uh, differential. And now it's just freewheeling. So the pinion has nothing to run against. I took the drive shaft out. So that will uh, remain still. And hopefully we can drive it on the front for a while while I'm chasing parts and kind of get a rundown on the rest of the truck. Make sure the rest of the truck is uh, decent, you know. Probably now it's got a bad trans or something. Again, I've never driven this truck. So uh, that's together. The axles will be spinning. Shouldn't be an issue. Again, there's kind of like clutches inside here because this is a limited slip differential. But uh, again, that should not be affected by the way it's being powered. At least my opinion. That's what I think. So uh, we can go back, uh, flip the carrier upside down. I picked up a new seal this morning. So that's got to go, get hammered back up, and then the uh, the yoke goes back on, throw some oil on that. And that, again, you know, won't be spinning, but it'll keep the oil from pissing out through the front. And uh, the only thing we have to worry about lubricating is these two bearings that are up here. So again, let me uh, continue on, get this thing back together, and uh, see if she'll go down the road. And got it all back together. Even remembered to put fluid in it. Now, get to see if it goes down the road. Right now it's in park, but it should be in neutral because there's nothing holding it from rolling. All right, let me get the tabs out of the way for the lift. We'll hop in and see if she backs. Let's go grab us a key. Four-wheel drive. Let's see what that does. Ha. Road trip. So my only fear is if I go and shut it off, this four-wheel drive turn off. I don't think it should. I'll find out here in a second. As I do my 16-point turn. Nah, we're good. As long as the... <laughs> yeah, it stays on four drive. Good. Road trip. Everybody keeps going. Although they got no place to go. are blown out of the back. <laughs> Hanging it right out. <laughs> Good. Good. Where is everybody going? Is there a party at my house or something? What the hell? I'm gonna have to take the long way around. Runs good. Here, for all you uh, Nazis. All right. I'm steering with my knee too, holding the camera. 
seems fine. I think it'll be fine to run it on uh, on the front till I can find a good rear section there. I wonder if you do a burnout if a check engine light will come on because the it's going to sense the back is not spinning the same speed the front is. I don't know. We'll find out, huh? All right, guys. Well, I'm going to go run it for about another 10 minutes. Let everything come up the temperature and. Uh, I take it down the highway. We'll see how it is on the highway. Let's do a little on ramp acceleration test. You can't even tell. There's, no, there's nothing in the wheel. You don't feel any kind of wiggle, which you really shouldn't because you're supposed to be able to run it in four wheel drive. And it would do it then, right? So. This is worst condition. Yeah, yeah. We be gone. The leaves are pouring out of the back of the truck. Later right out. Uh, they're going around in a circle, one of the two. Well, that's got to have a weird look from the outside, huh? Nah, no check engine like you on. That's good. It just does front wheel burnouts. I kind of want to run it in a circle, tight circle. We'll see how it is. Sammy's doom buggy is out. Super short here. That's fine. No waddle in the wheel. No pull, no jump, no nothing. Perfect. Hey guys, so it's about two days later. Uh, after the, the first half of this video that you've been watching. And I've run... Uh, 245,000, uh, 245 miles on it on front wheel drive, and it's absolutely fine. You wouldn't know the difference. If nobody told you. You got in the truck and drove it. Other than the four high light being on it, it drives uh, no different than it does pretty much on on rear wheel drive, except for when you're, uh, you know, on an uphill or something, and you floor it, and the front wheels make noise instead of the back wheels. But having said that, uh, I was able to. Uh, get it back together so it's driving everything else in the truck seems fine the trans is good everything works on it uh no issues ac's fine you know there's no check engine light that came on because it had a dead battery when i got it so i didn't know if it would have you know oxygen sensor problem or cat problems none of that seems to be an issue we burned up most of the uh the six month old obama gas that's in there and it's down to about a quarter of a tank probably run that a little further down and then we'll refill it uh, so now I'm going to pick away on some other things. I got a new, in the boxes back there, you can kind of see there's a new uh, mirror and a new taillight that are both broken on the truck. You can see the mirror, the, the outside surround is busted up on that mirror. And uh, just kind of pick away some other things like that. Maybe pull the bed liner out. I want to get the gravel and, and crap that's in there out of there. Wash it real good. Pop the bed liner back in and... Uh, you know, still be on the hunt for that uh, front, uh, the rear uh, pumpkin or carrier. But you guys uh, mail me some links. I appreciate it. Uh, some of you are right on the money. Some some of you um, may not understand what the issue is, but uh, it can't be a Sequoia. It can't be a, uh, a, a Forerunner or whatnot. If you're going to replace the whole axle, it has to be from a 2004 Tundra double cab, a double, a double cab. Axle is two inches wider than everything else. Sequoias don't have leaf springs for rear purchase. They have coil springs and uh, they have disc brakes instead of drum brakes. So none of that stuff is um, usable. I don't know if the carrier assembly alone, you know, the piece that I took out, fits from a Sequoia or a Forerunner. Information on that's kind of iffy and I don't want to spend, um, you know, $500 make a $500 guess on that. Having said that though, uh, one carrier did pop up from a 04 
double cab with 410 gears in it, etc. And I believe it was a misprint because it said for 50 bucks on uh, eBay and uh, 50 bucks shipping. I'm like, ah, that sounds really weird or cheap, but it said carrier assembly, and that would mean that it's the whole assembly, not just a case. So I placed an order for that uh, about two or three days ago. Of course, it was over the weekend, I think on Saturday. Today's Monday. They have not uh, responded back with uh, saying it has shipped, and they have not responded back saying that, oops, we can't find this uh, item kind of deal, you know, where they, they figure out that they screwed up and they they uh, sold it way too cheap. I did find the same picture of the truck on doing a search. Uh, what they do is on eBay, they don't show you the picture of the carrier. They show you the truck that was in a wreck and the pieces, uh, they list the pieces that are coming off of it and sold it. So again, the same picture that was on eBay showed up on a picture on a um, one of the search engines that searches all the junkyards for parts and it showed up for $501 with a $121 uh, cost to ship it. So uh, I have a feeling whoever listed it on eBay was supposed to list it for 500, not 50, but we'll see what happens on that. So now I'm gonna go get, uh, jumping on some, taking care of some of these uh, issues with um, just a little uh, uh, stuff that I already got for it to go fix up. And another side note too is I decided to look under the Tundra, my Tundra, the blue one, they're both my Tundra. But anyway, I looked underneath that one and uh, lo and behold, the leaf spring on the driver's side is broken. The same leaf spring that was replaced on this truck, which is not the, it's the very bottom leaf spring. Uh, below that is not really a leaf spring. There's one that hangs below it that's straight. That's the overload, I think it's called. Well, anyway, the one right above that broke, uh, is broken on that truck. And I want to try to see if I could just get another leaf to slide in there and replace it instead of changing the whole leaf pack. Because if you change one, you should really change both sides. And then when you start doing that, and then you get into um, the the hangers that are on each end of it, um, you know, all the stuff that goes along with the how the leaf springs are attached and, and how they end up. Uh, it can turn a $50 job into a $500 job. So I'm trying to keep it as the $50 job. If anybody knows a good place to go just by single leafs, I believe it's 42 inches long and two and three eighths wide. And I know I can kind of cut them with a, with a whiz wheel if I have to, but uh, if anybody knows a good link for that, would you uh, uh, hook me up with that? Appreciate it. They opened up the boxes and uh, it's like a pretty good match. Quality wise, I don't see anything different between the two of them. And this was just uh, uh, eBay, you know, I'm sure they're knockoffs. I think this one was 45 bucks. You go made in Taiwan kind of stuff. Looks like just two screws hold it in on the side. And get that out of there. We'll change that one out. And then the uh, mirror, it's got some good weight to it too. It probably weighs 10 pounds. Doesn't feel chintzy, and uh, I think that was like 50 bucks. Again, it's another knockoff made in Taiwan kind of deal, but uh, we'll see what the we'll see what the end result is after we put them together. Those are two real easy items to change. Literally about 15 minutes for a pair of them. And steal the bulbs out of that, put them in the stash, get rid of the rest of it. And here's that busted, when the mirror was busted. And that essentially, you just pull the, got a little cover that pops off the back side of it. And uh, you can reach down and grab the little clip, put a screwdriver in it, pop that free. They give you a new gasket to put on it. Hold it back together. Other than the fingerprints. Looks pretty good to me. I'm happy with that. So now I think uh, I'm probably gonna jump over to cleaning up this bed and get some of the crap out of it. I wanna get these rails off. It doesn't have, that's for one of those soft covers. I don't have the soft cover anyway, so get rid of that and see if we can get the bed liner out and deal with uh, that pile of crap that's underneath it. So let's do some cleaning and uh, get that out of there. I drove the truck out back, see if we can get that bed liner out of there.
definitely a good thing I took it out of there. Crap! It's got a lot of crap in here. Nothing good though. So we go get a rake and a broom. We'll get all that cleaned out of there and I'll pop that bed liner back in. Well, I wanted to do the little hand wash kind of deal with the wand, but they were out of order. So I figured I'd treat it to the car wash. Hopefully it doesn't rip off any of my new mirrors or anything. But I really wanted to kind of spray the inside of the bed. I guess we're gonna wait on that. Yeah, I ain't gonna do much for the back of the bed. cleaner anyway as I said didn't do much for the inside of the bed so when they open that back up again I'll I'll stop by and give that one last squirt you can see some blistering and rusting starting all that crap sitting on there you know oh there's pretty good probably what I'll do is I'll just spray the bed down with bar and chain oil before I put the bed liner back in but I'm gonna wash it I'll let it dry out real good and then I'll do that I know he made a lot of firewood for his home, and they have like, uh, like a half acre garden, so that's where probably all the mulch and stuff was coming from. The rest of it cleaned up nicely. We're in it right now, I think right around three grand we're at, including registering it. So whatever the rear end ends up finally costing me is uh, my, my total tally. So it's, it's good, it's ready to rock and roll uh, until I do, do get that rear diff. And I'm not going to clean the under the underside yet and spray the underside until I get the rear end in because I just don't feel like dealing with all the greasiness. So I'm running around until then, and then I'll be the first one in to start getting all the oils done. Again, everybody, thank you so much for watching, comment, subscribing, and uh, if you have any link to where I can find individual lease for lease springs, write it down below. Thank you.